On this episode of Break Up to Wake Up, the art of realistic expectations. So, like, okay, so like I said, I am, I, I, I will. I wasn't shit. I'm a lot better than I was then. But even when I married my wife, we had a conversation and I just was like, look, I I, I can't promise you that I'm going to be faithful to you for the rest of our life. That's honest. To me, I like, I like honesty and I'm not going to sit here and, and make somebody think that like forever is a long time. Yeah. And I'm not even going to play with myself like that. Yeah, especially I'm at 25. 25 years old. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so I was like, ah. so let me just be real with her. I feel like I get put in that box real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then it'd be a problem because they put me in a certain kind of box. But then I'm like, the breadwinner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I got well, you. I'm, you know what I'm saying? You the like, man yeah, in the, like, at the house. I'm the man at the house. Because we be in my house. Exactly. You know? So you really the man at the house. Yeah. <laughs> And they can't take you. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for turning into another episode of Break Up to Wake Up. This is the show where uh, we talk about something a little different when it comes to relationships. We talk about the ending of relationships because breakups can traumatize us so much more than anyone talks about they change us impact who we are and they also feel so isolating like no one yes. we don't talk about them very often and um so on break up to wake up we talk about you know the trauma of breakups how we heal how we cope how we move on and how we are eventually okay again yeah yeah, yeah. so my guest for today is nino b you know, is an actress, a model, an author, a host, entrepreneur. Aren't you also a mother? I am a mother. Okay, so you're a superwoman. Too. I am okay. a superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, anything else you'd like to say about yourself? Um, I don't know. I think you got it all. Yeah. yeah. You said actor. Yes. Designer. And designer. Okay. Stylist. Okay. A whole bunch of good stuff. Okay. I like so. dabbling and dabbling, whatever I can. Okay, same. I have like seven jobs. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, and so before we get started, I want to know this is this is a safe space. Okay. All of these questions are optional. Gotcha. And I want it to feel reflective and um, reflective, not triggering. You know. So. Already triggered. Yeah. <laughs> not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so firstly, uh, I went through a breakup sort of recently, okay. and I think what I found myself doing in this one that I haven't done in others is that I'm like comparing this breakup to my other breakups, which I've never done before. Yeah, I think this one feels different because this was probably the most like premeditated breakup mm. I ever had. Like, this was like the most long time coming was not shocking, not surprising. Like, I feel like we broke up in pieces over several weeks instead of it being like one big breakup, you know? I feel that. So I think this has been a lot easier for me to like emotionally cope with, you know? Mm. So, so I know you, you know, you were married and then you had a relationship after that. So yes. if you were going to compare the dissolving of those relationships, do you have any like, reflections on what was maybe different or the same um definitely i think like the same i would say that um even though in age i was a lot different between the both of them um mentally and emotionally i wasn't mature mm -hmm. um so i got into my marriage and i married quite young um and i and that was a almost a 10 year relationship that i was in um and most of my adulthood basically so that was like my for real real relationship um and then the person i got into a relationship with after my marriage i think that i just hadn't like a lot of things i just wasn't like mature about when it came down to it still doing a lot of the things from like my marriage and not necessarily like taking it seriously because i don't feel like i was in a space really to to do that yeah um and i do want to focus more on your relationship after your marriage but okay like we should start with the marriage okay <laughs> okay yeah um so you said you got married young so like what did you get married young 
Oh man. So um I've been with women since I've been about 16 years old. Uh really before then, but 14, I came out 14, 15 years old to my mom and uh it was a hot ass mess. Like just your normal, <laughs> normal, happy to be queer. <laughs> I'm here type of girl. I was definitely, uh, I'm from Detroit. So I, I grew up, I was um, more pr masculine presenting. So definitely like straight stud. Did a lot of, uh, I, I was a dog to say the, to say the <laughs> least. Uh, having fun, but I was young. Like I said, I wasn't, you know, I was young. I met my um, ex-wife when I was about 19 years old. Uh, we got together when I was about 21 and married when I was 25, uh, divorced by the time I was 29. So, um, yeah, I was I was young. Like I remember at t talking to my grandmother and I was like, yeah, I'm about to get married. You know, I was 25. I, I mean, she was like, you sure that's what you want to do? And I'm like, yeah. You know, so I you just her. felt like a good idea at the time. I, yeah, because she had been, been like rocking with me. I had been on some other shit and, um, and so I felt like I owed her that to a sense. Um, I think that it's a, a big mistake that a lot of uh, studs make. She was five years older than me. Um, it was like, she was ready for a lot of things that I probably wasn't ready for. And, but I was the man. So mm -hmm. I had to give my woman what she wanted and at least what I thought she wanted. Uh, and yeah, I really, I really wasn't ready for that <laughs> at all okay, so it was like was like your circle supportive of you getting married or did they all kind of like did they all kind of like eh. uh, my family was cool my and my friends were like all right because they knew her like you know we had been through our typical lesbian relationship i was actually the first chick that she had ever been in a relationship with but we had been like broke up and moved from out from with each other and moved back in with each other and rekindled and everything before we actually got married. So by this time, my friends, my family, everybody is used to her. So they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all just stop playing and do yeah. whatever y'all gonna do. And that's yeah. also like a, I feel like if you can rock with somebody at 19 and at 25, I would take that as a yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, you know, we grew together in some aspect, right. you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So when, when you got married, did you feel a sense of like confidence that your marriage would last or were you, <laughs> or, or were you kind that of like, hmm, we gonna see you. <laughs> uh, so like, okay. So like I said, I am, I, 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 I wasn't shit. I'm a lot better than I was then. But even when I married my wife, we had a conversation and I just was like, look, I, I, I can't promise you that I'm gonna be faithful to you for the rest of our lives. That's honest. To me, I like I like honesty, and I'm not gonna sit here and, and make somebody think that like forever is a long time, yeah. and I'm not even gonna play with myself like that. Yeah, especially I'm at 25. 25 years old, yeah. and it's like you know. So I was like, ah. so let me just be real with her, and you know, of course, it was like okay. We were um, in some points of our marriage in an open marriage. Mm. So that's a whole nother story. But we were, so I still had a lot of the perks and stuff from being single and feeling like I was single, um, even though I was in the marriage. So um, I did think that it would last. I didn't go into it thinking that I would be divorced. I, I thought that I would have a wife and that would just be it. You know what I'm saying? I thought because of the way we were doing things and the way that it was happening, it was built to last we had kids and house and dogs and picket fence and shit so i i did definitely think that it was a forever thing so you, did you say kids kids mm -hmm. yes okay so like did y'all create kids together so we actually um i have one biologically um i have a son that's 21 so he's an old grown man and um she has a daughter um, that I raised so we were together for 10 years I raised her the whole the entire time and then we adopted um yeah so we adopted right before our marriage was ending it was something that I had already we had already talked about something that already was a go thing and I'm a woman of my word so I continued to go through with everything even though I knew we were about to be over we, we yeah. both knew it was over <laughs> gotcha. yeah. was there 
Was there that kind of usual sense of like, oh, we need to try hard to stay together for the kids? Was that going on? Or was it kind of like, I think the it, kids going to be good either way? Yeah. And our oldest at the time were like 15 and 16, right? So we were like, the baby is one or two. We like, he'll be all right. He don't even really yeah, know too yeah. much. And the older kids were like, split up because y'all yeah, get on our damn nerves. Like, we, <laughs> we was working their nerves. So they was like, look, they was counseling us. Like, if y'all just separate. We know y'all love each other. We know, but just, it's okay. Oh. Yeah. So it was, it, yeah, it came to that. <laughs> I think that's a testament. I think that's a testament to your, your uh, children yeah. as well. That they're, uh, we're so aware. Yeah. You know, they wanted y'all to be happy. Yeah, so definitely. Happy. Yeah. So if you could, if you could sum it up, what <laughs> would you say was kind of the biggest problem in your marriage? Do you think it was you not really being ready for a marriage and not being mature enough? Or was it kind of like your compatibility or? I think uh, a combination of many things. I just think like, just how you were saying, like if I, if somebody stuck with me when I was 19 and 25, I would rock with them, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same type of thing, but you have to realize that you're just nowhere near the same person after you grow for so long. And some people grow with you and some people grow apart. And I think for us, like she's a great woman. I absolutely adore her, I love her, but she's just not the woman for me. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa, like I'm not, you know. So I think that um, it like definitely to, you know, it, it just, we just grew apart in a sense. Um, things that were cool when, we, when I was 25 years old, she, it was not cool when I was 29, 30, you know what I'm saying? So. We, like I said, we opened up our marriage to a lot of different things and um, that kind of took a effect on it as well. Doing things that we weren't quite emotionally and, you know what I'm saying, ready for, so yeah. So the divorce was kind of mutual? Oh yeah, no, she she left me, um, but it was good though. Okay. It needed to happen yeah. because I, was I, like, I ain't even mad at you. I, I, I wouldn't have left. <laughs> I'm just the type of person, like I'm just a stick it in type of, you know what I'm saying? If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I wasn't really, I was unhappy and we had talked about it and then we both knew we were unhappy and it was eventually going to end, but I didn't have the courage to like, just leave my wife and my kids in the, in the house and the yeah. family. I just, I it it's wasn't scary. in it's me. Scary and it's like a lot. Yeah. It's and scary. I didn't have that growing up. So if it, it meant more to me to try to keep something like that together, even if it, you know, but yeah, you gotta. My ex was like, right before we broke up, my ex was like, I would rather be so angry and miserable with you than be happy by myself. And, it's crazy. and I was like, why? Don't say that. <laughs> Don't why say did, that. Why yeah. do you want this? Like, we're, we're bad. Like, yeah. why is this, why? why? I yeah. was like, that didn't, you know. So I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I also know that um, my most recent relationship, I think was also, not I think, I know, this was the most I ever allowed myself to intertwine my life with a partner. Mm. Like I have, I've always been very, I've, your stuff's over there and my stuff's over there. Yep. But this relationship, I just let, I just let, I yeah. just, I just was like, we on the car insurance, we shared the credit cards, you living with me, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of things. And so like i'm we're still trying Separated. to reconcile how to do you know it's like and it's annoying because it's like now we still gotta argue like we together and mm -hmm. we're not and then mm -hmm. that's even more irritating because yes. we're not even together but we gotta argue about money girl just pay you know this damn bill yes. like no yeah. i get it 100 <laughs> uh, percent. so like what was like what was that experience like being married to someone and being together for 10 years and having three kids like that <sighs> God. detangling process what was that you like know you? Ah, golly that was crazy because majority of st things were still in my name and mm -hmm. and we did have to do a lot of like separating but it was um intense like the first year like that first that the first oh, few yeah. months and yeah it took a minute it took a minute especially with the kids because we went back and forth about the kids and certain stuff and you know just everything now we doing everything completely different and completely away from each other and um and then people still feel like they're entitled to certain things so i'm like 
You got to get your own phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get your phone on. And she like, hey, it's been like that all the time. But now I'm going to start checking the shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you might want to get your own phone. So yeah. I ain't checking to see who you're talking to. And it just makes sense to just start yeah. trying to separate that yeah, stuff. Not have so, so much access. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So where are y'all? Where are y'all like now? Like y'all have a good relationship now? Um... Uh, yeah, we, we're decent. We're good. Um, yeah, <laughs> we got we got to take care of the kids. And yeah. at the end of the day, I was with that woman for ten years, so it's yeah. like you know, at this point, it's like family. So she mm-hmm. worked my nerves just like my brother, and my cousin would. You know what I'm saying? And I just kind of take it for what it is, you yeah. know. But um, all in all, nothing but love. It's not you know we got we know we got a job to do. Yeah. It you know it's no sense of disliking each other or trying to beef with each other when we got somebody that we still attached to for the next eight years eight how did that boy ten twelve yeah. years <laughs> like yeah. but yeah so okay well that's good that's good yeah. so getting into what it was like dating post do people like I I'm a person who like if I had it my way I would be that person that's like I'm cool with all my exes. I don't have no issue with that. I feel yeah. like once it's done, it's done. I don't feel no type of, ooh, actually, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's like people, I find like when I'm dating, people really have an issue with that. Like they don't like, you know what I'm saying? So do people, Nobody like that. yeah. So do people have like a, like when you're trying to date, are people understanding of the fact that you have to communicate with your ex-wife and that you have, she has to be involved in your life and stuff? For the most part, I haven't had like any issues with that. Um, but I do like I've had the same phone number since I've been 16 years old. I won't change it. I, I'm just not. So um, that's probably more of an issue because then that means anybody that I've ever dated or talked to since I've been 16 will still call me and check on me. You know what I'm saying? So those type of women are more of issues while I'm dating uh, opposed to like my ex-wife. Like I think gosh. people understand, especially now that like. It, that has to happen. It's yeah. not something okay. that I'm trying to, you know, so, yeah. Okay. And um, also, like, me being in Atlanta, and like, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to ask you something, okay? <laughs> <laughs> me, me being in Atlanta in, like, you know, the LGBT women who date women community, I feel like, what I've noticed and what I've experienced is that people are real deep into the whole like stud and femme roles and those divisions. Mm-hmm. So like, and you're and you identify as a no label. Right? I do. Okay. So do you? I don't like. Do people like? like say stuff to you like there are studs like oh you're too masculine and like femmes or like you're too femme like you know or are yeah people, or people just take you as you are it, it's you, you know it's weird it, it it's get weird. it can get weird sometimes i think like when people aren't like sure of who they are i'm an issue for people oh, okay. i think like sense. when i date people that's completely you know what i'm saying like comfortable in their own skin it doesn't necessarily matter but i do get like i've, I've dated studs that are masculine and they're like you know, like, oh, you too, you too, you know, and it's just like, oh, well, you know, this, this is how you met me, you know yeah. what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. and, or, the, or they want me to tone it down, they want me to be more feminine or be more, and I'm really just a go with the flow type of person, yeah. if I'm feeling a certain type of way that day, then that's just what it is, so, um, but for the most part, people respect that, though, like, yeah. That's good, I'm glad. Yeah. Because uh, I, I feel like I get put in that box real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then it'd be a problem, because they put me in this certain kind of box the breadwinner you know what I'm saying yeah I, like, I got well, you I, you know what I'm saying you the like, man yeah in the, like, at a house I'm the man yeah because <laughs> <laughs> you know, we be in my house exactly you know? so you really the man at a house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't take you I feel that I feel that <laughs> um okay and then as you were you know dating the new person that you met uh when you first met them, what was your kind of mindset around dating? You know, you're like oh. post divorce, starting for entertainment career. I was, you know, what I'm saying, like, were you like ready to date? Were you looking, or were you kind of like not tripping about it? So I, I actually I dated a few people after my oh, divorce, okay. and when I got into that relationship, it was two years later oh. after 
me and my ex-wife. So in between those two years, I dated, I dated, I definitely did. Um, and when I got with that person, I felt like I was ready to be in a relationship. Uh, just because I guess time is yeah. what I would say. Like, damn, I've been single for a couple years now, I've dated mm -hmm. a few people, things ain't work out, haven't had the best experiences. And this person come along and I'm like, oh, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't really think that I was ready for that neither though. But yeah. Okay. Right person. Time, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. And um, me, me personally, like, I don't know if it's because I don't know if it's because I'm a Gemini, but like, wait, what's your sign? I'm a Leo. Okay, Leo. I like Leos. Um, <laughs> my like, first three girlfriends are Geminis. Yeah, that I, shit crazy. I feel like my soulmate is a Gemini. Like, I'm really convinced. I believe that. I yeah, believe that. Like, I Seriously. I feel like we'd be like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if it's because I'm a Gemini or not, but like, I'm a very like goody two shoes vanilla kind of like I can't lie I can't you know like I'm a very goody two shoes kind of person and okay. so I find myself very drawn to like the opposite of that yeah like when I tell you like I I don't even be knowing that they be a drug dealer <laughs> I'd be like dang another one like you know so I'd be really drawn so it's like I have to watch myself and like think about like why am I drawn to this person no, and yeah. like where is this coming from you know because I know that that's I don't know why but that's like it's something in you that attracts that yeah, type of person that attracts that like they want me I want the, you know what I'm saying so I have to be really adamant about being careful about that you know so yeah so when you met this person you got into the relationship with what do you feel like were the things that like you drew you in to that person and we're like yes this is, this is so my ex-wife is a film this person was a no label so i'm listening to you saying like i see i feel like it was my soulmate as a gemini mm -hmm. so i feel like my soulmate is somebody that's more like me um so that was probably one of the things like i felt comfortable with being myself mm -hmm. um you talked about like the the roles when it comes to feminine and studs and things like that so in my marriage I did feel more like I had certain responsibilities as the stud, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and because my wife was a femme and I was the first woman that she had been with, um, I really felt like I had okay. to, yeah. you know what I'm saying, step shit up when it came down to it. Um, and my relationship, I, I just, I felt more safe to be myself. Didn't feel there was like no pressure to like no fit. pressure at all either way, and I think that that just made it more of a comfortable situation. And uh, you said that things were kind of on and off with that person. Mm -hmm. So do you do you remember what caused like the first off? Probably me lying. I'm almost certain. So when I say I carried a lot of like bad habits from you know what I'm saying my marriage and shit. And then because it was so, because I wanted that relationship so bad, I didn't really know how to handle it, right? Anything that I felt like would kind of turn her off from me or maybe make her uncomfortable or something, I'm like, yep, can't tell her that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So On the next episode of Break Up to Wake Up, pushing relationship limits. But I do think it was times where like, I would be like blamed for things that I wouldn't have no, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. no idea that it's even going to happen or anything. Yeah. Like one time we walked in a place and somebody just kissed me. Like, come on in. I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. Yeah, and, and that's a lot, right? Yeah. Because one, I don't know I'm about to be kissed. And then yeah. two, I'm here with my girl. You know what I'm but saying? I'm also like, I don't think it's a fair expectation for you to want me to prioritize my unstable girlfriend over my financial security. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just especially like, I, I just feel like that didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And it's like, I understand how she felt about it, but I just felt like me trying to quit two, three of my jobs to spend more time with my girlfriend sounds crazy to me. And I was, I was so frustrated and I had like a, like a spray bottle, like for me, like spray, like water on my hair. And I, t I picked up that spray bottle and I put it back down <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, I don't think I've ever in my life gotten to a point where I'm trying to like pick something up and throw it.